Thanks for joining us here on PM Express. There's this debate that has been raging since last two weeks that we want to get into because it really has to do with the judiciary. But also, there have been a press conference by the NDC last week. We've seen today the majority leader also weighing to this. Yesterday, we saw the former president, John Dramani Mahama, weighing to it also. The chief justice also weighing into it. We're now having a conversation about this tonight on PM Express. Why more? judges to the Supreme Court. There are two sides to this particular debate, the justification and the opposition. Let's look at what really triggered this conversation. Because the Chief Justice initiated the process and it has been described as strange, it has been described as not normal. We'll get into that. Some even use the words unconstitutional. I have the lawyers with me to break that down for you. But the Chief Justice went ahead, initiated the process and recommended the appointment of Justice Ifia Sewa Sari Boche to the Supreme Court. She was not alone. And by the way, she qualifies. For many, it's long overdue because of her own competence and strength on the subject. One of the no-nonsense judges that you can find. And she is really a blessing as far as the judiciary is concerned. She was put up for consideration together with Justice uh, Pamela Cranting, also put up for consideration. There were five of them in all, including Justice Edward uh, Asante. And also we saw Justice Eric Bafo also uh, recommended by the CJ and Justice Angelina Mensa also recommended. Five of them, right? At the time when they were recommended, we didn't quite get wind of it until it circulated that she had indeed done so. Now, that sparked a controversy. The first controversy that erupted around this was did the CJ really have the authority to initiate that particular process? And quickly, the lawyers and those who are criticizing her pointed to the Constitution. Article 1442, they cited. They said, well, that process is the, to initiate the process is the president's preserved to do. We'll get into that because the Constitution is clear on this matter. The president shall appoint the other justices of the Supreme Court, one, on the advice of the Judicial Council with the CJ chairs in consultation with the Council of State and with the approval of Parliament. So three different functions, three different institutions. When it comes to the Judicial Council, they have to advise. When it comes to the Council of State, the President will consult them. And then finally, Parliament will approve. Okay, in that whole chain, the Chief Justice only sits and is activated as a chair of the Judicial Council, not starting the process and recommending herself, which is really what their critics have pointed to. That is the first line of controversy that emerged on this particular uh, subject. And then the issue then also moved now, it has actually now become, do we need more judges, more justices of the Supreme Court? Currently we have 15 of them, and the CJ is arguing that they aren't enough. Let's get into the specifics of, of the justices. So we, the, the recommendation that she's made is to increase the number from 15 to 20 justices of the Supreme Court. And as far as she's concerned, you see her in your picture there, it is a case of what the science says because there's so many cases currently pending. The backlog is growing. If you really want the administrative justice to be effective and avoid delays, and the lawyers will tell you, that justice delayed is justice denied, then you really need to increase the numbers of the Supreme Court so they can do their jobs and do it effectively. So that is fundamentally her case. Then she begins now, as we've now seen the documentation, in February, she writes to the presidency detailing a strong argument backed by numbers to make the point why you need more judges. We've now seen that document, right? And then in April, the, we've seen the Attorney General also write his own opinion on the side because the presidency says, we've received this matter, this document from the Chief Justice. We want your opinion on the matter also. So in April, the Attorney General writes his and was received on the 2nd of May at the Jubilee House. But the numbers here are interesting. And so this is what you see there in, in terms of the backlog of cases and it's been climbing. If you look at the five-year period, that the Chief Justice's own document focused on this study, this assessment that she did, which really anchored her decision to recommend the nomination and appointment of these five other justices. She, she, tr she sort of traces the backlog. In 2018, when he started tracing it, 
she started tracing it. She, it was at 202 cases, backlog, not head, cases in the pipeline. Now, because she argues we don't have enough judges, they haven't managed to answer or, or deal with it. And then you come to 2022, where it's now climbed all the way from 202 cases to 595 cases. That is a CJ's point, put it simply, that this is obviously justice that has slowed down for a lot of people who are struggling as a result of the numbers that are in short supply, so increase it. Okay, the NDC obviously is opposed to this particular uh, subject. John Dramani Mahama says we need to place a cap and consider that because I'll come to the point about what the Constitutional Review uh, Commission also looked at. They traveled the country and they came to the conclusion, having considered majority of us, that what Ghanaians want at this time, having uh, implemented the Constitution for so long, is to place a ceiling on this, place a cap on it. The AG is then asked to look into what Attorney General has asked for, and she go, he goes into it and then agrees with the position of the CJ, because he, fundamentally his argument is that if you increase the number of Supreme Court judges, what you do is you make the administration of justice effective. And by the way, it is constitutional. Why? Because as we have currently, there is no cap. There is no ceiling in the constitution. It just says you must have a minimum of 10. If you are the Supreme Court, uh, if you are the Supreme Court justices of nine and the, uh, the Chief Justice herself to it, you come to that conclusion. So, so there's no legal issue there as far as he's, he's concerned. But he's not interrogating the subject of procedure, right? He is interrogating the issue. Do we need more Supreme Court judges? And that's why he comes to the conclusion that there's no illegality there. He talks about jurisdiction, so the Supreme Court needs to be amended because if you look at it, I was counting some, in terms of the responsibilities that are assigned to the Supreme Court itself, eight in all, and it does a comparison with, say, the UK Supreme Court, which has that appellate jurisdiction solely. And then, of course, other issues come into play. But mainly, that's all they have. And they have 12. And he's comparing that to that. Then you go to the Supreme Court, and he makes the point that if you go to the Supreme Court, every state has your own Supreme Court. 344 of them assisting the federal Supreme Court, where you have nine. And he sort of isolates that point and say, you cannot compare the two. We'll get to the specifics when my uh, lawyer friends join me for a conversation. Also here from the NDC, because John Dramani Mahama yesterday makes the point that for him, we need to return to what the Constitutional Review Commission has said, and that let's put that before the Ghanaian people. What do we really want? Yes, 1992, when we're drafting this particular constitution, we said we only need that uh, minimum number of 10. Having practiced it and implemented it for so long with the current controversies, and we've seen that sometimes it's become a subject of political football. You can actually send people there, and, and the Kufour's administration is well documented. If you have a case you want to win, it is subject to manipulation, right? So why don't you place a ceiling there? In fact, if you look at the Attorney General's own document, he makes the point about if you increase to 20, it has financial implications for the public purse also because they retire on the salaries and you have to pay them, uh, you know, that, that particular amount as they retire. So it's a very complex, detailed conversation we must have. And the time is right because the parties are campaigning to form the next government. If, if we make this a subject for campaigning, at least it becomes a serious issue for the two main parties who most likely will form the next government. But we must shape the conversation. What should be the focus? Should we place a cap? on it at 20 or 15, or we just leave it for a president to come and say, I want to appoint 50 judges. Um, that is open for interpretation. We'll get to that when my guests join me for a conversation and sit down for it is. If you look at the 1992 Constitution though, and I, I wanted to make this point because this is something that we've spent money in doing. We cannot throw this away, which is the point of John Ramani Mahama there. He would take this Constitutional Review, uh, rep Constitutional Review's report to the people of Ghana for consideration. And they were very, very clear on the subject. What do we do? Amend the constitution, they say. Provide that ceiling of 15 uh, justices at the Supreme Court. They say new provisions should be made difficult to amend and trench it, in essence. So you place a cap and you stick to it. But would you reduce the duties assigned to the Supreme Court then from 
um, what it is currently, eight of them in all, if you're counting from the old Supreme Court's uh, duties and responsibilities to sign the Constitution to something lesser, maybe like the UK one, and assign the rest to the other lower courts, I don't know. It's a conversation we must have. And then you look at the various presidents we've had. All of them have appointed judges to the Supreme Court. The president with the highest by far, as you see on your screen there, is uh, Kufo, and of course, you also have Akufo, who has appointed quite a lot. But if you look at the argument, it's because he anticipates that some of the judges will be retiring, and so you put people there. But these have the opportunity to do quite a bit. And you, you see JM there, only four, Arthur Mills only three, Rawlings ten uh, in his time there. So this, you cannot ignore the uh, question about the politics, because it's in there somewhere and we need to try and find it. Where do we place the facts? Where do you see the politics? Or where do you see the national interest? My